Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzz Weaver channel. We discuss things like current events, headlines that are in the news, social media technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. If you are here for the first time, I'd like to welcome you guys here. Along with frequent viewers, I would encourage both of you guys right now to click on that watermark down there in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe along with that notification bell so you guys will know when the next Friday vlog is available along with additional content that's here on the channel. Earlier this week I did a review on Black Rifle Coffee. You can check that out up here in the top right hand corner. Would certainly encourage coffee lovers out there to consider getting some Black Rifle Coffee. I did get it during the 4th of July weekend. It was on sale. So it was a great opportunity to check that out. If you're on social media just in general, especially here in the States, you have probably seen their ads and it is very good coffee. I even rank it in my top three of choices but nonetheless uh be sure you check that video out and if you are interested in ordering the product of course i do have links to that to the um or to the black rifle coffee in the amazon affiliate links in the video last friday at the start of san diego comic con tom cruise came out to speak with fans and tease the newest, very early trailer of Top Gun Maverick to the uninitiated, that would be Top Gun 2. The original film came out May of 1986. I was a senior in high school. If you haven't seen many movies from the 80s, they are quite iconic and classic. And of course, Top Gun would be one of those films in particular. But as we are in 2019, uh, it isn't without controversy, of course, or most things out there in the social media universe or just in a general public social pop culture, there is always going to be some sort of caveat. As we've talked about here before, uh, marketing has now adopted outrage as part of their tool to deliver information uh, to the public. And of course, uh, what I'm referring to here, of course, is that uh, despite the fact that the, the film, or the film, the trailer had all sorts of very interesting nostalgic tones to it, which of course got many people excited and uh, boy, it really went viral when this came out. But nonetheless, uh, apparently one of the finance seers, Tencent Productions out of China, as you might be familiar, China has invested a great deal into Hollywood. But nonetheless, as we have talked about here on the channel when it comes to China, we know that they have certain uh, positions of political interest when it comes to Taiwan and Japan. So why am I referring to both of those particular countries? That is because in the original movie on Tom Cruise's jacket, him being in the Navy, of course, uh, he put patches on his jacket uh, indicating where he has been. And those two places were Japan and Taiwan, which um, have a very tumultuous relationship with China, although in recent years it has gotten better. But nonetheless, uh, as most things Chinese, uh, they uh, wanted to make sure that those two flags we're not in the film now for most people that will have that have seen the trailer or will be watching the movie this is of no particular major concern so uh, but nonetheless of course it was an interesting little uh addition <laughs> to the news now it didn't come out till several days later when the eagle eye uh, viewers of uh, content as we have nowadays i mean whether it's gaming whether it's just about anything movies People are always looking for Easter eggs and, and any little incidental thing they can find. And this, of course, was one that uh, uh, didn't take long for people to uh, discover. But nonetheless, I thought it was kind of interesting and, and mildly amusing. But of course, we have talked about China here before. But nonetheless, uh, I will leave a link to that particular article down in the published section. As we are recording this today, Robert Mueller is in front of Congress and what could best be described to any common sense, rational, cogent person as political theater. I actually saw Politico yesterday say that this was their Super Bowl, and I think that epitomizes the whole thing. Even going back to Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation hearing, these representatives knew during 
uh, Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation that this was not a trial, this was not a jury trial, but it was an opportunity for them to hang things over Brett Kavanaugh that were unsubstantiated, speculative, and later to find out completely inaccurate as far as Christina Blasey Ford's testimony, outline, incident, and the ridiculous and absurd subsequent witnesses that ended up just, their whole stories just completely fell apart. It was completely absurd. And the point I want to make here just briefly before I get more into this is that the problem that I have with the current representatives that we have right now in uh, our political system isn't so much their politics, really, although I do have exceptions to some of it, and isn't even really about their hatred towards the president so much as we can expect that. But the idea that the American public or, or the world in general is either too dumb or they perceive them to be naive and don't understand how our system works because they make it unnecessarily complicated. And so we have incidents like this. This particular hearing today should not be necessary. It is not necessary. It is pure political theater. This investigation is over. No collusion. That's it. That should have been the end of it. But as Politico said, it is their Super Bowl. And the reason they say that is because the mainstream media for the last two and a half years, and we have talked about it here on the channel, have used the investigation as their carrot on the stick that at any moment, any day, any week, or perhaps any month, the president was going to be found guilty of Russian collusion in the 2016 election and he would be impeached. That was kind of the narrative based around this FISA warrant signed by Rosenstein, which amounted to absolutely nothing other than the fact of many different uh, absurd charges, allegations. I mean, we did see the indictment of uh, Paul Manafort and Michael Cohen, but as far as the president was concerned, there was no particular collusion. But today's episode, or today's reality TV um, hearing, of course, the Democrats have been talking about the um, fringes around the edges information that Mueller could not directly get into or say conclusively. That being, of course, that uh, obstruction is what they're really trying to get at. They're trying to get Robert Mueller to suggest that um, there was, in his opinion, or in his thoughts, or in the current investigation, he perceived, thought, or uh, had um, was under the impression that there may have been, speculatively, some form of obstruction. Now, if you've watched any of it uh, in the mor or this morning, you would know that uh, whether it's the, the Democrats are pushing their narrative and the Republicans are simply reminding everyone of uh, what took place, what the conclusion was, and then other factors. So this, again, is just theater for these representatives, whether it's Democrat or Republican. Now, of course, it was the House that, that requested this because you know either their constituents in the media wanted it or they just wanted yet another opportunity to smear the president. And I would make the argument, and I say this with a great deal of confidence, that the House members are using their office uh, or they have weaponized their office to smear their political opponents. And it's terrible, it's sad, and it's ridiculous because the impression here that they're making to any rational, civil, cogent person is that uh, you know this hearing was completely unnecessary. The conclusion had already been arrived at. The evidence did not turn out the way certain groups of individuals wanted. And I could also equally make the rather biased political statement that uh, when it comes to the left, it isn't about the evidence at all. It is about the seriousness of the charge. Because the seriousness, seriousness of the charge can be, of course, exaggerated, sensationalized, and elicit an emotional response. So it isn't really about the facts, it isn't about the evidence, it is about the opportunity to drag Mueller in front of the cameras again in an attempt to place whatever kind of smear, doubt, uncertainty, unresolved questions, this, that, and the other, that have no particular meaning in the general outline of the case, which concluded with no collusion.
Now, I'm not going to elaborate any more on that because obviously you guys get it. It's unfortunate that, that here we are uh, having to go through this, but clearly the House has weaponized their office and are using it to um, smear their political opponents. I will leave links down to it in the published section below, one or two. Won't go too radically into it, but nonetheless, I did want to bring that up because that was one of the major newsmakers this week. Tory conservative Boris Johnson is now the newest prime minister of the United Kingdom. And I would imagine that the uh, Remainers uh, could not be very happy about it. I did see some comments made by Jeremy Corbyn and such. And it's, it's kind of to be expected because, of course, for the last three years. Now, for my American fans here, if you guys do not recall, Back in 2016, the British voted on um, whether to leave the EU and or um, remain. So you had the Brexiteers and then you had the Remainers and Boris Johnson was one of those Brexiteers. So it looks like Halloween day is going to be Brexit day, hard Brexit. Now, why am I as an American so excited about this? What in the world does, that, what in the world does my opinion have to do with British politics? And that is this, as an American, I believe in individualism and sovereignty. And as long as the United Kingdom is under the thumb of the EU, I do not consider the United Kingdom, just my opinion, of course, as a sovereign nation because of this, the oppressive globalist nature that is the EU. So, of course, I am very enthusiastic about uh, seeing uh, the United Kingdom get out of the EU. But, of course, they're not going to make it very easy. The uh, EU, of course, uh, will probably act as a spurn divorcee because they have ensconced themselves, they have embedded themselves so deeply into the United Kingdom. And of course, you know, it's uh, kind of their meal ticket. I think it's absurd just in my own personal American opinion to sell people the idea or sell people on the idea that you can travel, work, and uh, interact within, the, within Europe uh, with far greater ease than if uh, it was just, uh, you know, like, a, like an American visiting the EU or trying to get work or trying to go to school and stuff like that. I really think that's a terrible deal when you have to sacrifice your sovereignty for what would be a country club pass. That's just kind of my opinion on it. You know, the whole Brexit thing, the EU is much more in depth. There's a lot more to it. But nonetheless, um, congratulations to the Brexiteers there in, uh, in the UK, because I'm sure this is probably going to probably finalize it. It will be a hard Brexit and it will probably be very ugly because I would anticipate the EU and uh, their vassal countries that are also part of the EU are going to be none too happy that this happened. And of course, the EU will probably put pressure on those countries not to be as cooperative. They're just gonna make, look, the EU is gonna act like a spurned divorcee and they're just gonna make uh, it as miserable as possible there in the UK. And probably Remainers will also try to make things very difficult. The media will become hyperbolic. They will, you know, say, look, you know, the country's falling apart. Look at what we've done. Now we can't uh, do our economies going down. We're going for a recession. They're just going to turn it into a big, ugly mess. But uh, I mean, the enthusiasm that uh, Boris Johnson displayed yesterday or when I had heard the news, of course, as of this recording was quite impressive. But nonetheless, uh, definitely worth mentioning also in this week's Friday vlog. So uh, I will include some links in the public section below that you guys can check that out. All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap it up for this Friday vlog. I hope I did okay on just three hours of sleep. <laughs> some things came up in the evening uh, that had to be addressed and uh, yeah, it kind of interfered with my sleep. But nonetheless, I think I made it. I think it was at least coherent, perhaps even remotely articulate. But nonetheless, guys, I wanna thank all of you for your continued support of the channel. And of course, right now, I want all of you guys right now to click that like button because it is a uh, form of support that I do appreciate from you guys. And of course, as we see now, the obligatory channel icon appearing right there on the screen. Go ahead and click that to subscribe along with that notification bell so you guys will know when the Friday vlogs are available. And incidentally, if you did not know, they are available on Friday. And I will see you guys right there behind the camera next week.